As part of creating this survey, David Binder Research conducted six focus groups. Uh, there were two focus groups in New York to address those participants and four focus groups in Los Angeles. Utilizing a diverse group of MPIP participants that um, included representatives from all the affected local unions. Those focus groups help to mold the survey. It's going to allow us to core down on the issues that are important to our members in a way we've never been able to do before. This input, along with the survey, these town hall meetings, are going to allow us to better understand the priorities of our membership as we address the challenges of benefits and health care contract negotiations going forward. We also researched several healthcare professionals and decided on John Garner from Garner uh, Consulting. Mr. Garner began his career in employee benefits in 1971, became a certified employee benefits specialist in 93. He's certified in flexible compensation instruction, group benefits associate, a retirement plans associate. He also serves as a national legislative government affairs advisor for the Disability Management Coalition and chairs the CEBS Committee for International Foundation of Employee Benefit Funds. He's the author of the Health Insurance Answer Book. He's the co-author of the Medical Disabilities Claims Handbook. And his articles have been published you know, all over the world of uh, health care and benefits. His extensive credits are impressive. That's why he's here today. It tells us, and he's proven to the committee, he knows his stuff. Um, so with that, um, I'll finish here and turn it over to John Garner from Garner Consulting. Yeah. Thank you. I'm glad to be here today. My purpose is to give you some background information on trends in healthcare costs and healthcare benefits. And we're going to start by talking about healthcare costs and what some of the trends have been. Uh, and even before that, we're going to talk about why healthcare costs are increasing so much more rapidly than the consumer price index. And then we're going to talk about trends in health benefits so that you understand what's happening in the world around you. Uh, what's happening with uh, employer-sponsored plans in general, what's happening with multi-employer plans like MPI, and what's happening specifically in the entertainment industry. So first of all, why are healthcare costs going up so rapidly? Well, there's a variety of reasons. Uh, I'll, some of them are here on this uh, slide, not all of them by any means. And not all of them are bad things. Uh, there's some good things here. We have new drugs and new technologies that are expensive, but these are things we don't want to give up. New drugs like statins to prevent heart attacks or cocktails to make AIDS something you live with rather than die from, those are good things. New technologies like... Uh, MRIs and CAT scans uh, ha have eliminated the need for anybody to have exploratory surgery to find out what's wrong. That's good stuff. It, it's stuff we have to find a way to pay for, but we want that. We also have an aging population. As we get older, we tend to use more health care. And, you know, I, I'm all in favor of getting older. I think everybody here wants to get older, and that means we're going to see doctors more often. And so we have to find a way to pay for that. And then there's some bad things. There's a lot of fraud and abuse in the, the medical care system. Uh, and the powers that be have to do more to try and root that out. And that, that's beyond the control of a, most of us in this room. There's also a lot of over-provision of medical services. Uh, and there's a variety of reasons for this. For one thing, most doctors get paid based on what they do. The more they do, the more they get paid. So they have an incentive to do more. Uh, also, they have an incentive to protect themselves. There, there's something called defensive medicine. You know, they want to make sure they don't get sued for malpractice. So they will order one more test just to make sure that it gets done. There's also a lot of advertising on TV. You, you always see those ads with these very happy people taking these drugs that you have no idea what they're for, but you want to be happy like them. So lots of people go to the doctor's office and say, I want this drug. And lots of times it's easier for the doctor just to say, okay, than to convince you why it really doesn't apply to you. And part of the reason for the over-provision of medical services is that health insurance, health benefits, have done such a good job of insulating people from the real cost of the care. 
Health benefits are a wonderful thing. They protect people from financial catastrophe in the event of a major illness or injury. But at the same time, you know, people who are covered by health benefits don't really have much skin in the game. So they don't have an incentive to be good consumers. You know, it's, oh, well, I'm busy. I'll go to the emergency room tonight, even though that costs 10 times or 100 times more than going to the doctor's office does. Or, you know, well, wh why not see the doctor? Why not have that extra test, even if the marginal value is minimal? Uh, sure, I'll have the MRI. You know, the health care is unique. You know, when somebody decides whether or not they're going to go to a play or a movie, you know, they're making the decision. You know, they're shelling out the money. They're deciding whether or not it's worth it. You know, but that's not how it works in health care. The doctor's the one who really decides what's needed. You know, very few of us challenge that. Um, the insurance company is the one who pays for it. You know, the patient just kind of goes along for the ride most of the time. So that definitely contributes to rising costs. We also have a problem of cost shifting. When a hospital treats somebody without insurance, and they're obligated to treat them, when they show up in the emergency room, they have to treat that individual. But they typically don't get paid anything for that. And that means the hospital has to charge those of us who have health benefits more than they would otherwise charge us. Similarly, uh, Medi-Cal doesn't pay enough to cover the costs. You know, if doctors and hospitals only treated Medi-Cal patients, they couldn't keep the lights on, they couldn't pay their staff. So that means that they have to charge more to those of us who have health benefits. So we've got a lot of cost shifting going on. And then there's another element called leveraging. Um, th this is where you keep benefits the same, the same fixed dollar amounts like a $5 copay. When $5 copays became typical, that was maybe 10% of the total cost of an office visit. Now it's probably more like 2%. You know, it's, it's peanuts. Um, so if you keep benefits the same, the plan pays an ever-increasing percentage of the total cost of health care. And that, that's got a leveraging impact. That means if costs go up 10%, the cost to maintain the, that level of benefits is even more than 10%. And there's lots of other reasons. Uh, we have compliance with health care reform. You know, health care reform has lots of good elements. Uh, people can cover their kids until they're 26. There's no lifetime maximums. There's limits on annual limits within benefit plans. But all that costs money. And so that's got to be paid for. And then there's all kinds of other things not on this slide. There's a nursing shortage, which drives up pay and benefits for nurses. That drives up health care costs. Here in California, hospitals have had to retrofit their facilities or rebuild their facilities to come in line with seismic safety standards. That costs money, et cetera, et cetera. We've got lots of reasons for health care costs increasing, some of them bad, some of them good but it's just the world we live in. So let's look at some of the numbers. And I know not everybody can see this, so I'll, I'll tell you what's up here. Um, this is health insurance cost per hour. This is total cost. This covers what's paid by both the employer and the employee. And it shows the increases from 2000 to 2009. This data is from the United States Bureau of Labor Statistics. And you can see it goes up every year. Some years, it, 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 the lowest up there is 4.2%. The highest is 11.2%. Whatever it is, it's well above the general rate of inflation. And over this time period, it's an increase of 94.2%. Now, this looks just at the employer portion, not the amount paid by employees, but the amount paid by employers. And again, this comes from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. We go from 2000 to 2009. The lowest increase here is 5.5%, the highest 14.7%. And from 2000 to 2009, employer costs went up 118.6%. They more than doubled in this time period. I don't know about you, but my pay didn't double in that time period. Now. That was the actual rate of increase. Um, 
the lower bars here show from 2007 to 2009 what we saw on that first graph. That's the actual rate of increase. The taller bars show what it would have cost to maintain the same level of benefits. So we're looking at double digit increases to keep the same level of benefits. Plans cut benefits in order to keep the costs down. So the, that increase, that roughly doubling of health care costs was after deductibles had been increased, co-payments had been increased, benefit percentages had been cut. So there's lots of ways to look at benefits. There's lots of different elements, deductibles, co-pays, benefit percentages, out-of-pocket maximums. I want to focus in on one element and show you some of the changes that we've seen throughout the employment-based population at union plans and at entertainment industry plans. We're going to focus just on the per employee deductible and specifically in preferred provider organization plans, PPOs, and we're going to look at the median amount. That means you take all the deductibles and line them up from highest to lowest and you find the one that's in the middle for half or higher and half or lower. So first we have data from the firm of Mercer showing that in 1999 that median in-network PPO per person deductible, and this is for large employer-sponsored plans, so 500 or more employees, and this is all types of plans, corporate, public sector, union plans. The median in 1999 was $225. By 2009, it was $400. Looking specifically at union plans, data from the International Foundation of Employee Benefit Plans shows that that median deductible went from $200 in 2009 to $300 in 2011. 50% increase in just two years. Our firm, Levy, Garner & Isaacs, did a survey of other entertainment industry plans, and these are the deductibles that we found in other plans ranging from $150 to $500, with the median being $300. So we put it all together, and I've added another element here. There's an organization called United Benefit Advisors that surveys all plans, including small employer plans, which are most of the plans in the country. They found that the median per person deductible last year was $1,000 when you look at all plans. That large employer number I showed you was $400. And then for union plans and entertainment industry plans, it's $300 and MPIs at zero. Now, that's just one element of benefits. When we look at your plan and compare it to the other entertainment industry plans, the MPI plan is either the best or equal to the best in a number of other categories, family deductible, office visit copays, out-of-pocket maximums, generic drug copays, and member contributions. And most of the other entertainment industry plans don't offer an HMO, but when we compare it to where an HMO is available, your plan is either best or tied for best in terms of both the individual deductible and family deductible, since you have none, office visit copays, out-of-pocket maximum, generic drugs, non-preferred brand name drugs, and member contributions. So the final thoughts I want to leave you with are that there are many reasons why healthcare costs are rising more rapidly than other costs, and we have no indication that this will change anytime soon. <laughs>